All right, so uh, before I demonstrate some load use uh, and, and some potential of the solar system, uh, I'd like to drain the battery some, and then uh, in order to reactivate the solar system, one of the key moves is to trick the charge controller into believing it's nighttime. Uh, the way that we do that is through our system design, we include an on-off switch for the solar panels. This is the common location for us in Airstreams because we route our wires through the, the ceiling. Uh, we interrupt the positive of the MPPT through this switch, and this allows us to isolate the solar panels from the charge controller, which is the same thing as nighttime, basically. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, and then we're gonna walk back to the GX device to show you uh, what that looks like now. You'll notice that the uh, PV charger icon reflects zero watts. As you would expect, it's nighttime, you're not getting any power. Um, we're gonna leave that off for a minute, because at the moment what we have is the inverter on and we are running an air conditioner continuously. It's about 1400 watts. And we're pulling about 133 DC amps out of the batteries. This will allow us to just take some of the capacity in the batteries down enough for the other charging systems, particularly the solar, to reactivate in bulk charge and show you what its true potential is. Uh, so we'll keep this inverter pulling power out and then we can switch the solar back on and watch this uh, PV charger icon kick back into gear. Um, so do you want to sneak around and turn that on real quick? So you'll notice the PV charger says zero watts. Um, as soon as we get the, the solar panels back on, the MPVT will recognize there's daylight and it'll activate its charger and go into bulk charging and we should see this number climb up pretty good. We've got a 400 watt system up there. I'm not 100% sure what conditions are, but I would expect to see about 50% of that right now. There we go, it's taking a minute. Now as the solar is slowly climbing, there's like this threshold of, I don't know, 30, 35 watts where the dots start to flow. Anything less than that, the dots don't flow. But as soon as you reach a certain threshold and wattage output, you'll actually see the, the dots on the icon flowing power from the charge controller to the batteries. You're also seeing power flowing from the batteries to the inverter and from the inverter to the AC loads. So our net current is about 118 watts uh, draw. I'm sorry, not watts, amps, 118 amps. That's uh, 1500 watts at 13 volts. And that's because the inverter load, which is the air conditioner, is far greater than the solar can keep up with. Uh, this is kind of a good demonstration of how much solar do I need to offset an air conditioner in live time? A lot. Right now we've got 400 watts and we're getting roughly 50% output based on the time of day and conditions outside, and that roughly 200 watts output is not even close to keeping up with 1400 watts of air conditioner power. Um, you'd probably need about 2000 to 2500 watts in live time to offset an air conditioner. Um, and that has to do with inefficiencies and how the power flows, uh, but it can be done. It's just not as common, and that's why Typically when you're boondocking, you have a limited time and duration to uh, run these heavy loads. And your solar at this particular size is only gonna replenish roughly you know, 50, maybe 100 amp hours of your battery capacity in a day, whereas the air conditioner is gonna pull at least that much out in an hour. Uh, so you can see how an air conditioner load is a substantial power draw compared to what a yield of a solar system is. I think that this is deep enough discharge for us to go ahead and reactivate the um, shore power. So I'm gonna go into pages now, I'm sorry, not pages, into menu. I'm gonna go into the device list and I'm gonna select the inverter system. <clears throat> I turned it to inverter only before. It's acting as though it doesn't have a shore power connection right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that we do want 
the shore power to pass through and we also want the charger to activate. I'm not gonna hit charger only, I'm gonna do the on. Uh, there's not a substantial difference between those two for this demonstration, but charger only means that you will never have the inverter system pulling DC power out regardless of AC input conditions. It won't load assist for you, it won't hybridize and pull power out of the batteries to make up the difference of what you're not getting from shore power. Um, and it will also not automatically start inverting if you lose shore power. It will just focus on charging the batteries and if there's an AC input shutdown of any kind, it'll go silent. If you leave it in the on position, it will enable load assist and it will enable inverter on if you lose AC input. Uh, I'm leaving it in this position because we're gonna demonstrate load assisting from the device. We'll go back to pages just so we can get a bigger picture of what all of our subsystems are doing. Now you see the inverter's in a state of bulk charging. It's pulling 2,400 watts from shore power. It's passing 1,300 of those watts to the air conditioner load. And then it's activating the charger and that just cut off because I think our crew inside just shut our power down. <laughs> we actually maybe have tripped the breaker. I think that's what we did. That was a crucial step I forgot to tell you. Let's uh, back up here. Okay, so one really crucial move to operating an inverter smoothly is for you to set your current limiter to match what your AC input source is. This is a very common thing that happens with our DIYers and our install customers and also in-house, just like you saw. I forgot to set the current limiter to match what we're plugged into and currently we are plugged into 15 amps of AC power, not 30. And we were trying to pull more than 15 amps out and it killed the breaker. Uh, so then the inverter switched to on. We're gonna have to go back inside and turn the inverter uh, power or the AC input back on. Um, let's see where we're at now. Yeah, we're still inverting. So we'll have to go and turn that breaker back on and then we can show the pass through again and the charging. All right, so uh, before we lost our video there, we uh, made a mistake. It's a common mistake where you forget to set the inverter input current limiter to match the incoming AC power. Uh, equivalently, the inverter did not understand that it didn't have that much power to pull, so it would not hybridize when it recognized that it didn't, and it just tripped the breaker. It pulled too much power out and it tripped the pedestal breaker. So now that I've gone into the multi-plus and I have dialed the current limiter to match the 15 amps that we're plugged into, now we can get it to load assist uh, when we run loads beyond that 15 amps. So we'll go back to pages here. Um, all the while we're doing this, the solar is doing what it can. It's delivering power to the best of its ability. It's only 220 watts, but it's better than nothing. Um, the inverter is charging right now, so it's supporting the AC load at 13 watts, and it's also trickle charging the batteries a little bit. It understands that you've only got 15 AC amps to work with, and you know, roughly 12 of those are, they belong to the air conditioner and what's left over can now go to the charger. It's got a sophisticated charger that will back off its operation in place of AC load use, which is pretty cool. So we're running one air conditioner steadily. The charger is just trickling in power alongside the inverter. And now I'm gonna turn on a second air conditioner and we're gonna watch the inverter load assist. It's going to support one of the air conditioners off of the batteries and the other one through AC pass-through. So let's go to zone one, mode on. Back here, you'll notice that our AC loads will spike up and you'll see that we didn't increase a lot on shore power because it understands we've only got 15 amps to work with, but we need more than that in our AC loads. So now it's assisting and it's pulling that power out of the batteries to make it happen. This combination of 1700 watts is one air conditioner that's actively running and the fan of another one. So we haven't even hit the 
dual continuous running of air conditioners yet. We still have a compressor to kick in here. So we'll give it a minute. You'll audibly hear a little bit of a shift. That compressor kicks in, this load will spike up, the draw out of the batteries will be much more substantial. Any minute, there we go. You see that jump, 2400 watts? Now we've got the continuous operation of both air conditioners. The reason this is so unique is because without the smart phase selector technology, this inverter system could not access both air conditioners in a load assist hybridization feature. It would not have the ability to recognize that any of the loads on the other leg are needing power. So with the smart phase selector, it can see both legs of the system and it can distribute power to where it needs to go according to what it's got coming in and what its ability of output is, which is 2400 watts, right? We can load assist uh, 22 amps of AC power, uh, but generally we set it to match a one-to-one. -one. So if you've got 15 amps coming in, it'll give you 15 amps out of the batteries, but it won't give you more unless you program it to do so. And there's there's some risk to pushing it harder. You, you might discharge your batteries a little faster than you were expecting. And you're working the system a little harder than you need to. Uh, so this is a good example of supporting two air conditioners through the inverter system, the smart phase selector, while we're out here uh, plugged into 15 amps of power. And if we turn one of those off or we turn both of them off, you will see the transition Zone one is off. See, we just killed one of them. And you see it went down in AC load support. It's still assisting a little bit, but it probably hasn't quite adjusted. There we go. Now we're back to bulk. And I'm turning zone two off. So you can see our AC loads have significantly decreased, which has allowed that 15 amps of incoming AC power to be distributed mostly through the charger and then supportive of some of the minor loads that are taking place. All the while, our solar's just been going along for the ride, just pouring in power as, to the best of its ability. And the combination of the inverter charger and the solar, we're, we're putting about 97 amps into the batteries. And there you go, there's load assisting with the 50 amp full pass SPS system. Till next time.